Hello, in this video we are continuing with the problems related to vectors and here we have to obtain the position vector of the point which divides the line joining two given points. So let's have the diagram first. So here we have two points A and B which are separated by a certain line joining them and we have a point C and we wish to determine the position vector of the point C. Now first up we need to know the position of the points A and B or we need to mark them first. So the position of the point A and B with respect to a given point O let's take that as the origin. So A has a position vector which is OA and it is let's say it is the small a vector and similarly b has the position vector b small b vector which is the ob vector now with this information available to us now we can take the position vector from c or we can take uh, the position vector of c with respect to the given origin and it is oc now if the C point divides the given uh, given AB line in the ratio let us say M is to N so AC is M parts and CB is N parts of the total length of the given line AB separating the two points or rather in this case joining the two points AB now in order to obtain the position vector OC with respect to the considered position vectors of the point A and B that is the small a vector and b vector we can proceed as follows now OC as you can see the vector over there is equal to OA plus AC because uh, that is following the triangle law of vector addition now from that we also have OA vector plus that is equal to now AC is actually as I said it is M parts of the total length of AB so it is M parts out of M plus N of the given line AB vector and we have the value of the AB vector from this triangle that is uh, uh, the ABO triangle we can have that the AB vector is simply equal to B vector minus A vector as you can see that uh, from the triangle law we would have had that uh, the vector A plus AB vector would have given B vector so we can take the take uh, the A vector on the other side so we have AB vector is equal to B minus the A vector so we can put that value now OA we will substitute the value over there that is AB vector plus this is M over M plus N and AB vector as we know is B vector minus A vector so if we then multiply it out then we will have the value taking the LCM M plus N we finally obtain the value of the OC vector which is the position vector that was to be determined we have that value to be MB vector plus NA vector over M plus N. Now we can consider a special case over there that if the point C would have divided the line AB in equal parts that means we would have had M to be equal to N then we would have had the value to be equal to let us say m is equal to n is equal to some value x so uh, we have the value of oc will now be equal to uh, x times of b and x will be taken common in that numerator also we'll have 2x in the denominator the x can cancel out and we have that to be equal to a plus b over 2 so that is the value of the uh, of, of the position vector of the point C which is dividing the 
dividing the line joining the given vectors in equal parts and for any other ratio that is for m is to n we have the formula as we had obtained it now with all that knowledge we can try a numerical problem where we have to find the position vector uh, we are given the position vector of a and b and that is uh, i cap plus 2 j cap plus 4 k cap for a and 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus 3 k cap for uh, b you can call it hat or cap doesn't really matter find the position vector of a point c that divides a b in the ratio 2 is to 3 so here m is to n is 2 is to 3 so we'll directly put the formula over there so we'll have the position vector of c we can take it as uh, oc but since we are not providing any diagram over here there's no necessity of it so we'll just write position vector of c is equal to n times of a plus m times of b so n here is 3 times of a is i hat plus 2 j cap plus 4 k hat and plus this is 2 times of all that is given that is 2 i cap plus 3 j hat plus 5 k cap and that entirely divided by m plus n which is equal to 5 in this case so that would yield the value to be equal to that and as far as the midpoint is concerned we know that the midpoint uh, simply divides it in equal parts so we'll just add those two vectors and divide it over two to get the uh, formula now we have already uh, in fact uh, no we haven't really added we are we've added three times and two times to it so we'll be adding that the addition is quite straightforward so the position vector of midpoint would be equal to uh, the addition of 2 is giving us 3i cap plus 5j cap plus 9k cap entirely divided by 2. So that is our answer for the position vector of the midpoint. Having known the ratio condition, we can prove the midpoint theorem. That is, to prove that the line joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel and half to the third side so we have a triangle over here let us say it is the ABC triangle so we have the vertices having the uh, the vertices are a B and C over here and they have the position vectors let us say with respect to a given origin we need not consider the origin every time so we have uh, the a vector or the point a to have a position vector uh, a vector and the point b has a position vector b vector and the point c has a position vector c vector with respect to some reference point some refer uh, some origin now we consider the midpoints of both the sides let us say we consider the sides a b and the midpoint of it is d and we take the midpoint of AC as E. So DE here will be a vector directed from D to E. Now the position vector of the point D and E can be given as follows. That is, we simply follow those uh, rules of position vectors. That is, uh, for D, so this is the solution, for D, we have its position vector to be equal to uh, A vector plus B vector over 2. And for E, we have the position vector to be equal to A vector plus C vector over 2. So these are the position vectors of uh, the midpoints of the given of the two sides of the triangle now the the value of de vector is going to be equal to the position vector of 
e that is the final vector minus the position vector of d that is the initial point that is how we calculate it so that results in the value to be equal to a plus c over 2 minus a plus b over 2 and that results simply in c minus b over 2. Now if you look at it c minus b c is the position vector of the point c and b is the position vector of the point b. So this is if, if we take the vector b c into consideration then b c will be equal to c vector minus the b vector which is which are the position vectors of the respective points so that means this is half of the b c vector and if we are to consider the vector notation so d e vector is definitely along the b c vector and that means d e is parallel to b c vectorially and if we are to consider the magnitude then we have the value of DE to be exactly half of BC. That means the line joining the two midpoints of the two sides is half of the third side, which was to be proved over here. And that is what we have obtained. So this is the midpoint theorem in its entirety. Then we have another theorem which states that if the midpoints of consecutive sides of any quadrilateral are connected by straight lines then we can prove that that would result the new quadrilateral that would result from connecting those midpoints will be a parallelogram so let's see if we can prove that we will be using the case of uh, ratios once again this is midpoint so the ratio is 1 is to 1 now we are considering a quadrilateral any quadrilateral so let's see we are taking this so we have this quadrilateral to be a b c d and we'll consider the midpoints over here so this is the midpoint of the first of this a d line and a b b c d c although that doesn't really look to be straight but we can assume that they are straight so we have this supposedly to be e f g h and we connect them so this is from e to f then from f to g then from g over to h and then h to e i'm drawing it the other way around this already looks to be a parallelogram so let's see if it is exactly a parallelogram now the position vectors of all those midpoints we know that uh, we can just write them down directly so as a solution to this we'll write the position vectors of the midpoints will be the first one let's say we are taking e into consideration uh, for e we have the value to be equal to a we will take the points directly as the position vectors for now a plus d over 2 then we have for uh, f we have that to be equal to a plus b over 2 then again for uh, for g we are taking we are getting it as b plus c over 2 and then for h we are getting it to be equal to d plus c or c plus d over 2 now if we are to consider the distance or the direction over here so probably we'll take the directions along uh, in the cyclic pattern in the cyclic way and then we have in the we are we have taken it in the clockwise sense so we now have the line supposedly we are considering fg and he 
so f g if we look at it that will be equal to we have the f over here and we have the g over here so that will be g vector minus or the position vector of g minus the position vector of uh, f and that would lead us to the b's would get, would get cancelled out so we have c minus a over 2 that is what we are getting then if we consider h e so h e vector would be e vector or the position vector of the point e minus the position vector of the point h and that would lead us to a minus c over 2 now we are getting this to be negative because i have taken it in the clockwise sense but as we know that for parallelograms we can take the sides uh, considering the length along e h that is from e to h or i can write this directly actually that that we that is e h will be equal to c minus a over 2 which is completely equal to fg and also parallel considering the direction so fg is parallel to eh and also we have the magnitude fg to be equal to eh and the rest of the two sides will have to follow the same thing because in that case we uh, in case of parallelogram it is true and therefore this completely is a parallelogram that is the midpoint of the consecutive sides the midpoint is joining the consecutive sides of a quadrilateral always end up being a parallelogram now let us determine the position vector of the centroid of a triangle abc where the position vectors of the vertices that is abc are given as a vector b vector and c vector respectively now as we know that for a given triangle the centroid is the point which divides the median so we take the vertices as a b and c which have the corresponding position vectors as a vector b vector and c vector and the median which goes from one of the vertices to the midpoint of the line in front of it uh, the side in front of it so AD here is the median and what does the centroid do well the centroid simply cuts the median in the ratio 2 is to 1 so we have the ratio of the median to be in 2 is to 1 about the centroid so this centroid that we have over here let that be at the point let us say we take it as g and so a g is in two parts and g d is in one parts so now we will be using the case of uh, the ratio now first up we have to consider the position vector of the point d so position of position vector of d will be equal to uh, b plus c over 2 and the position vector of the point g will be now now that will be the position vector of a multiplied to the ratio now this is 2 is to 1 so with 2 is to 1 m is to n is 2 is to 1 so n multiplied with a n multiplied n is 1 over here that is multiplied to a plus m which is 2 it is multiplied to the other one that is b plus c over 2 and that entirely divided by m plus n that is equal to 3 and so this would give us the 2's will get cancelled out so this is simply a plus b plus c over 3 that is what we have over here
the position vector of the centroid with respect to the position vector of the vertices. Now this is the final one. In this we have to show that in a trapezium the straight line that is joining the midpoints of the diagonals is parallel to the parallel sides and half their difference. So we have a trapezium over here. These are the two parallel sides and uh, well, they are parallel of course. Yes, I try to keep them parallel. Uh, this, these are the slanting sides. And we have the diagonals over here. Now, the straight line joining the midpoint of the diagonal. So, let us say these are the diagonals and these are the midpoints of those diagonals. And there's a straight line which is joining the midpoint of these diagonals. So let us first name those sides. We have the sides as supposedly A, B, C, D. And they have the position vectors as we have been doing. Uh, A, B, C, D respectively in vectors. And let these sides be, these points be E and F. So we have EF as the vector and we'll see if they are parallel to the parallel sides. And also we have to prove that they are half their difference. They are, uh, that means the difference between the parallel sides, uh, the line EF uh, in, taken in that sense is half their difference. So first up we have the position vectors of uh, E. And that will be simply uh, C minus uh, C plus A or A plus C, A plus C over 2. Position vector of F will be uh, B plus D, B plus D over 2. So EF vector will be the position vector of F minus the position vector of E. That means we have this as B plus D over 2 minus A plus C over 2. And if we rearrange this, what we get is this is simply B minus A minus uh, D minus C. Or we have, if, if we are taking it minus, then it will be C minus D. So C minus D all over 2 and this is nothing but the AB vector minus the CD vector or the DC vector. We can take this as CD. That over 2. So it is the half of their difference this is what we have proved. Now if we are taking the DC vector over there to be equal to some parts or some value of AB then we can apply that over in this formula that means uh, over here And what we get is from this part, we have using this value, we get this to be equal to as AB is B minus A. So this is B minus A over 2 minus X times of B minus A over 2. And that is equal to 1 minus x times of b minus a over 2 which is the value of dc so from this we can say also which is the value of uh, ef this is for ef so we can say that uh, this is 1 minus x over 2 of ab ab is parallel to dc as well so ef is in the sense of AB so EF is parallel EF is parallel to 
AB and also it is parallel to uh, DC. So these are the two things that we had to prove. We have proved the first part or the second part over here and the first part over here and uh, that's all from this video. We'll be doing more such problems, numerical value ones in the upcoming videos. Till then, thank you for watching.